Hey friend, yeah, don't look at my hair. This is the Mrs. Wolfie from our Half Acre Homestead, and today we're canning ground beef and we're making meatloaf. So it's a video twofer. Here is the um, hamburger that Howie and I got at Costco. This is uh, 2.78 kilograms, so it's just over five pounds, and we got it for 24.48. So Howie requested meatloaf before I can all this. Now remember, we do have beef coming, but I like to have some on the shelf. And I don't want to freeze this because I already have a side of beef coming and there's going to be lots of hamburger in it. So I'm going to make a meatloaf and we're going to can up the rest. All right. For the meatloaf, we have an onion, two eggs, a half a loaf of bread, ketchup, salt, pepper, and garlic. But before we get started on the meatloaf, I want to get... I'm going to dump this hamburger, and this is supposed to be lean. It looks pretty pink to be lean, but let's just make sure this is actually lean ground beef. Okay, it is beef. I, maybe they, I thought maybe they put pork in it. Look at that. Beautiful. Now I'm going to take one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to take approximately a good pound. Okay, to a good pound of the hamburger, and I'm going to put it in the bowl for our meatloaf. Drop the onions in there, and I'm just going to take my spatula here, and I'm just going to break this all up. You can never, ever, ever can raw ground beef, okay? And it's, it's just not wise. It's a viscosity issue. The inside of the ground beef may not get it may be to so tightly packed that you can't get it all so it's kind of like pumpkin puree that way but I never ever ever can raw ground beef or especially meatloaf I've seen people can meatloaf with raw hamburger and all kinds of stuff in it not a good idea so I'm just going to give this a sprinkle of salt and I'm going to put this in a 300 degree oven to slow roast and I will continue to break it up every once in a while. Now I gave Howie the option of bread crumbs or bread cubes in the meatloaf. This is, um, this is two day old homemade bread and I'm going to, I'm going to pop this in the freezer for some bread pudding later on. I'm just going to slip this into a bread bag. And that can go in the freezer for maybe a pumpkin pie bread pudding. But I'm not making it today because we've got we've already got so much. We, we've got lots of sweet breads in in the uh, fridge. We've got still got green tomato bread. Still got my carrot bread. So I'm just going to cut these up and drop them in the blender in, to make bread crumbs. And we'll be back. Okay, so here's our hamburger, our onion, and here's two and a half cups of breadcrumbs from day old, two day old homemade bread. I'm going to use up the last of this bottle of ketchup. Two eggs. Whoops, I think I got a shell in there. No, well, maybe not. Maybe it's a breadcrumb I saw. Garlic. Pepper. Salt. And to help with the drying up, we're going to put in 
about a quarter cup of dehydrated leeks. I tell you, this stuff is so packed with flavor. I like to line my tin with a piece of wet parchment. You don't have to wet it, but it makes it um, fit in the bread pan better. We're going to mix this now. The best way to do it is with your hands. That way you can make sure everything gets properly mixed all the way through. And now it's only not quite three in the afternoon, so this isn't going in the oven until the hamburger comes out from roasting. So I'm just going to mix this ahead and put it in the fridge. I should have cut those onions a bit smaller, I think. But, oh well. Get it all. And get it into that pan. I did have an eggshell, and look, it's right there. Okay. And I'm going to pop this in the fridge for later. Okay, just as I suspected, there is a lot. They call this lean. Look at how much water and fat is in this hamburger. So I'm going to shut my oven off now. And I'm going to put a lid on this. And then I'm going to get my canners out. I'll let this cool down just a little bit. Look at that. Isn't that terrible? Guess that piece can go back in. Look how much was in that. Look how much liquid. was in that hamburger. Look at that. Filled my grease jar right up. All right, so I'm gonna get my canners ready. My canner ready, because I don't think I'm gonna, I'm only gonna use one canner. And uh, we'll be back to can this. Here's my canner. I broken down the lid and the gasket and I've given it a good scrub. Also the same with the pot. I've got the recommended amount of water in the bottom with a splash of vinegar. Here's our hamburger. I had jars already washed and upside down on a towel. Now I'm gonna, this meat still isn't really chopped up well, but I'm actually going to just, I don't care if it stays in chunks. I'm just gonna put, fill each jar to the top without pressing it down too much because we don't, we don't need, need a lot of um, meat in the jar so and it's already cooked so it doesn't matter if it's in chunks and I didn't bother putting any salt on here because I salted it when I cook when I put it in the oven so these all filled up I think I'm only gonna I'm gonna try and stretch it to six pints see if I can't you know, make it stretch a little bit farther. Let's push that meat down in there. Yeah, we need another one. Okay, so I might get more than six pints, guys. I might get seven. They're not full pints because we don't need full pints. A full pint is a full pound of hamburger. If I can get three quarters of a pint, well then, awesome. I'm making it stretch all that much farther, aren't I? And now, I this isn't my always, always rag, folks. Where's my lids? Okay. My always, always rags, but I am going to dip it in my vinegar water here. You want to make sure that these are down below the lid. They are going to vacuum down to about half a pint. Okay. So I'm dipping this in vinegar because that helps keep, that helps keep any fat from passing past the barrier. Always, always. When you're wiping your rims, guys, check for nicks. You do not want to waste a jar because you didn't see a nick. All right, we got seven jars, pint jars of meat in our canner. We're gonna put our lid on. And when this spouts, 
When this spouts a steady stream of steam, we'll set our timer for 10 minutes. Okay, so we're now spouting a steady stream of steam. I'm gonna set my timer for 10 minutes and we're gonna let that vent. Never skip the venting process, all right? You have to vent the canner for 10 minutes. It pushes the air out of the canner so that when you put the weight on, it creates the correct pressure for canning. So never skip a step. Okay, our timer's gone off. Take my little weight out of the vinegar. I give it a little scrub just to make sure that you want to get the brush bristles right inside and inside the holes. And on it goes. And as soon as we get our first vigorous jiggle, we are going to time these for an hour and 15 minutes for pints or an hour and a half for quarts. These are pints. And there's our first vigorous jiggle. So I'm going to turn this down a little bit. And then when it does this little huffing bit, now it's going to drop down again. Don't, okay buddy, don't turn it down too fast. You got to turn it down slowly, a little bit at a time, or else you'll end up having to reheat the canner and that will cause your jars to siphon liquid, all kinds of stuff. So just a little bit at a time until it's going okay 75 minutes okay our timer has gone off and we are going to let this canner cool naturally we're going to just turn it off and it'll huff and puff and do all its thing for a little bit but you want to let this cool down enough so that you can comfortably rest your hands on the side of the canner before you open it. If you open too soon, you can ruin the pressure inside your jars. Okay? Let it cool down. Be safe. Be smart. And this was how much fat and water came out of that. And there. Seven jars of chunky cooked ground beef ready to use. Here is the meatloaf supper you requested. Wonderful. How's things going on the roof of the barn or the garage? Give Gracie a green bean. She says, I know you got meat on your plate. Stop teasing me. It's a meatloaf dinner, dear. Yeah. yeah. Well, I figured as much with the camera in my face. Yeah. Watch it, it's hot. Oh. You saw all that hamburger and said, I want a meatloaf. That's what I ordered. Yeah. Um, <laughs> give her a piece of meatloaf. Too hot. No, take an edge. Or blow on it. Daddy, she took went for a ride with Daddy in the truck today, didn't she? There you go, Good baby. Stuff. Good job. One tail up. Yes. Thanks. Honey. This is the Mrs. Wolfie from our half acre homestead and that's what I did with just a little over five pounds of hamburger. We got meatloaf for supper tonight and lunch for sandwiches tomorrow and we've got six pints in the canner. Yes. Take care. God bless. Stack them shelves kitties. Mm -hmm.